Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to look at file transfer in MS-DOS, but probably not in a way that you've looked at it before. Allow me to explain. So, several months back, I acquired one of these serial to Wi-Fi modems that you see here from the old net. And recently, I actually got a second one. So what we're going to do today is first, I'll show you these two modems and their similarities and differences. Then I'll show you how I configure a file transfer. And then we're going to be using public domain Z modem to execute that file transfer. So we'll go ahead and take it to that point. So let's go. Here we have the two modems and they are slightly different. I'll point out some of the differences of them. First of all, you will notice that both are in these nice 3D printed cases. This particular case, you can actually take the front cover off without undoing the uh, serial connectors, I guess we can say. Whereas for this case, in order to take the front of it off, you actually do have to undo those little serial screws. Taking the boards out of the cases, we'll also see what we have as far as similarities and differences. The board on the left is the newer board, and we can see that its Wi-Fi chipped is marked with a designation ESP12E, whereas on the right, it's marked as an ESP8266 mod. And as we flip these over, we can see more differences. The board on the left has this custom printed PCB, Whereas over here, we have kind of more of this generic PCB for joining things together. So at this point, I've grabbed two Compaq LTE 5400s and two power cables. So let's go ahead and hook those in. And these are just your standard micro USB power cables. So I'll go ahead and hook that in here. And we'll get it all hooked up to the Compaq serial port. And with these lovely machines all booted up, I have launched Bananacom. So I'll go ahead and show you the setup that we need to do there, as well as the setup we need to use for the Z modem program that we'll be using to transfer data today. So here in Bananacom, the first thing we're going to do is dial one modem from the other. And I happen to know the IP address. Now you can see that they are connected and we can type back and forth, hello, and then hi, and I'm actually typing that from the opposing side, but you can't see it because of the fact that we have echo turned off locally. So here you can see the page for the public domain Z modem. And as you can see, we're using version 1.26. And I'll take just a minute to talk about some of the commands. First of all, you can see this command here for receiving a file where you use the RZ command and a path to the file name if desired as well. However, Zmodem will actually auto detect this when you send a file. So for the examples we use today, we won't be using it. And here you can see the command for sending a file, which is SZ. Now, let's talk about some of the special options that we have to use. First, we see this dash C option to specify the COM port. In our case, it's going to be COM1. Next, we see this BN command to specify the baud rate. And we're going to try a couple of different baud rates today. Also, we see this dash D command, which we use to specify disable carrier detect. Because for all intents and purposes, even though we're using a modem, we're really just using a serial connection between two different systems. And finally, we're also going to use this dash H command, and that's to ignore or clear to send. This ensures that we don't have any sorts of problems in our transmission. Once again, we're basically using a serial connection and we don't have any sort of hardware control here, just software, and I don't believe that's even enabled. So with these options, we'll be able to use public domain Z modem to send and receive files.
From there, we'll go ahead and launch a Z modem receiver. And you can see I'm setting this baud rate to 115200. And I'm gonna go ahead and send a file. And in this case, the file already exists. So it was smart enough to detect that, which is actually kind of cool. And nothing was sent. Let's try that again. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a copy of the file, and then we can send that. And you're gonna notice something. As we send this, we get a ton of CRC errors. Ouch, that's pretty bad. Well, why could that be? I'm gonna speculate that the baud rate is a little too high. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and relaunch Bananacom, as you see here, and we're actually going to disconnect. And then from there, I'm gonna set the baud rate to 9600 instead, and I'll go ahead and reconnect. And then from there, exit Bananacom, and we can execute the transfer again. Here we go, with a new file name. And what are the results? Well, as we transfer here, we can see that we're receiving data and we have less errors. So next up, let's try sending a whole directory of files and see how that goes. Once again, we see the transfer start out and it starts out pretty good. However, when we get to this executable, we start to see some CRC errors as well. Not as bad as with the higher baud rate, but there were errors nonetheless. However, it was able to recover and the transfer succeeded. We can then go and have a look at the file and lo and behold, we can see the file contents. So this worked out pretty darn well. So one thing that I went back and did was actually try the transfer again at 2400 baud. And boy was it slow, but I didn't get any CRC errors. That said, I'm apt to rely on the protocol to fix any CRC errors and transfer at a higher speed. They call it a trade-off, but in my case, I'll take the higher speed. Okay, well that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. A new way to transfer files that perhaps you've never thought about, and now you can see it. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There is more content to come. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is available. If you liked what you saw today, please consider giving us a thumbs up. If not, well, you know what to do. In all cases, as always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.